Are we rolling, Kong? Affirmative. Okay, what's my line? Um, welcome. Of course. Welcome, everybody. <sighs> Leo makes this look so much easier. I have a great idea. How about we check out some of Leo's experiments? With the help of his sister, Ella. Of course, let's watch. This is gonna be great. Just think, Kong. As soon as I get this camera set up, I'll be able to live stream my first ever viral science video, just like my friend Ryan. Say, Leo, I was thinking perhaps I could have a segment in which I discuss the periodic table. Uh, we'll see. This is kind of supposed to be my channel, you know? Excellent. I'll start brainstorming segment names. Calm time. Communicating with calm. Come on and feel the noise. Akula? Sorry, Akuro. I can't let you be on camera either. I don't want to reveal my Elamon secrets to the whole internet. But don't worry. People watching will still learn all about the elements that make you. That's something, right? Aku! Okay, camera's ready. Five, four, three, two... Wait, how's my hair? Oh, you don't have hair. Oh, right. Action! And we're live! Welcome to my first ever live stream, viewers! You're about to witness the coolest science lesson ever put on the internet! Status report. You have two viewers. Never tell me the stats, Kong. Now, let's get started. Welcome to... Intro to Basic Chemistry! Starring me, Leo Woods! We should have workshopped that name a bit more. Today, I want to introduce you all to the wonderful world of elements! Uh, <clears throat> for no other reason than, uh, chemistry is awesome. Definitely not because I have a big secret that involves transforming elements into powerful monsters. <laughs> nah, no way. Smooth. To begin with, everything in the universe is made up of little particles called atoms. Those atoms are able to come together and form what are called elements. I heard elements. Does that mean it's time for my segment? No, Calm. Aww. Uh, apologies for that disruption, viewers. Make that viewer singular. One must have logged off. Not listening. Now, where was I? Um, every atom has a core called a nucleus that is surrounded by swirling little bits called electrons. Inside the nucleus are protons, which have a positive charge that counter the electron's negative charge. Uh, drop a comment if this is all making sense. Status report, zero comments. Okay, well, um, anyway. Atoms that come together to make an element all have the same number of protons in their nuclei. That number is called the element's atomic number. And that atomic number appears on the periodic table of elements, which I'll be going over now. Won't I, Leo? Um... Oh, come on. That would have been the perfect segue. <clears throat> Elements are pure substances that cannot be broken down into simpler substances by chemical reactions. Now, what the? Ella, what are you doing? This is my super viral video, not my little sister's. Leo, I know chemistry is awesome, but if you really want to make a viral video, you're going to need to include some popular dance trends. This is not Ella's dancing video. This is Leo's science video, period. Period? As in periodic table of elements? Ooh, can I go now? Leo, please? I know that wasn't the cleanest segue, but you're not giving me much to go on here. Okay, okay, fine, do your segment. Yay. Welcome all you science heads to Comms Chemistry Corner. Today I'm going to be counting down my top three favorite elements on the periodic table. Coming in at number three, iron. Chemical symbol, Fe. Classification, transition metal. Atomic number, 26. And remind us, Leo, what does the atomic number signify? Number of protons in the nuclei of those atoms. Come on, smile. You'll never reach a million followers with that negative attitude. You are correct, Leo. And Ella, you are correct, too. Leo, you could stand to smile more. Iron is, by mass, the most common element on Earth. It can be found in the Earth's crust, in water, and even in your human body. About three to four grams of iron are flowing through your bodies right now. Neat, right? 
Uh, Gazuntite. Now it's time to move on to my second favorite element, gold. Chemical symbol, AU. Classification, transition metal. Atomic number, 79. Gold has long been considered valuable because of its lustrous color, its near indestructibility, and the fact that it appears in nature in mostly pure form. Meaning you can pull it out of a riverbed, as is, and basically strike it rich, then and there. Or you can win a gold medal for your awesome, totally on-trend dance moves! That's correct, Ella. You, uh, go, girl. Thanks, Com. At least somebody is supportive around here. Now the time has finally come to reveal my number one favorite element. And now, it's time for Com's number one favorite element! My number one favorite element is a tie! That's right, I just couldn't choose a favorite between hydrogen and oxygen. They're both incredibly vital elements. Hydrogen, or H, on the periodic table is the most abundant substance in the universe. Oxygen, or O, is necessary for human beings to survive. How could I pick? I don't know, Colin, that kind of feels like a cop-out. Yeah, that's like me saying my favorite food is strawberries and yogurt, which actually, now that I think of it, sounds pretty good. Exactly, Ella, because as incredible as these two elements are on their own, they're even better when you combine them. By adding two hydrogen atoms to one oxygen atom, you get the chemical compound H2O, or water. A colorless, flavorless substance that is necessary for life on Earth. Okay, that's kind of a good point. I told you, I'm the king of segways. All right, I think that wraps up chemistry content with Calm. It's Calm's Chemistry Corner. All right, uh, out of curiosity, what's our view count at? Hmm, it appears our view count spiked at the three minute mark. That's interesting. According to my calculations, that appears to be the exact moment that all three of us were on camera together. I knew it! The internet loves dancing! Wait, we're receiving some comments. Hmm, according to the viewers, they specifically love the combination of dancing and science. Of course! I should have known! Just like how a chemical compound combines elements to create something new, our channel combined dancing and science to create something totally unique! Yes! yes! I'm sorry for trying to hog the video all to myself, guys. I should have known. Just like in chemistry, sometimes combining different elements produces the coolest effects! That's okay, Leo. Why don't we try this whole thing again? Sounds great! Take it away, you two! Meanwhile, me and my co-producer will man the camera. hook Now you'll see Ella here is expelling carbon dioxide as she dances, or CO2. CO2 is a chemical compound made of two oxygen atoms and a Ella! You'll never guess what I'm working on! A new invention? A new invention? Uh, yeah. Uh, how'd you guess? Oh, just intuition. Well, you'll never guess what it does. Automatic cookie baker? It's an automatic cookie bake! Hey, how'd you know? Oh, just intuition. In any case, I'm about ready to give it a test run. Watch that conveyor belt. Once I flip this switch, it'll instantly start pumping out delicious, piping hot chocolate chip cookies at a rapid speed. Here we go! Doesn't seem very instant. Uh, something must be wrong. It's overheating. Oh, I know just what to do about this. Give up and go play outside? Of course not. It just needs cooling down. This freeze ray should do the trick. See, it's working like a charm. Hey, Leo. I thought this was supposed to make cookies, not crackers. <laughs> I, I don't understand. What happened? I'm no couples therapist, but I think I might be able to help explain this breakup. You see, Leo's cooking making machine is made of iron. Iron, for those that don't remember, is a chemical element with an atomic number of 26. You may also remember it as the element that Irox is made of. Now. One of the traits of natural iron is that it is ductile. 
Ductile is just another word for pliable or flexible. It can be shaped and reshaped with relative ease. But, and this is a big but, a huge, gigantic but, iron is ductile at room temperature. When iron gets heated up, it's a whole different story. Like all matter, when iron gets heated up, the atoms inside it move more rapidly. Then, when Leo cooled the iron, those fast-moving atoms were forced to abruptly slow down. This rapid shift from fast to slow meant that some particles were grinding to a halt while others were still bobbing around like crazy. All of a sudden, the molecular interior of that iron was like the bumper car arena at the county fair. Kablamo! See? The rapid temperature shift caused the iron to lose its ductility and instead become brittle and unstable. Pretty cool, right? I mean, uh, not cool. Not cool at all. How very sad for Leo and his, uh, cookie-making machine. So, my cookie-making machine cracked apart because it was made of iron. And iron can't be rapidly heated and cooled without breaking up? Sounds like it. Well, I guess there's only one thing to do then. Give up and go play outside, give up and go play outside. We've got to try a new metal. Uh, Can I get a little positivity, please? Uh? That's the spirit. First up, copper. It works! Blech. These cookies taste like pennies. Unsurprising, copper, or Cu on the periodic table, is an element with the atomic number of 29 and is famously known as the substance pennies are coated in. Back to the drawing board. Fortunately, you can melt this bad boy down and, by my calculations, net almost 89 cents. Thanks, Com. Next, tin. Eureka! It works! It's getting hot in here with that machine going. I'm gonna turn on a fan. Ah! That breeze destroyed my machine! Hmm, that makes sense. See, 10, or SN on the periodic table, has an atomic number of 50. Pure tin is one of the weakest metals and is almost never used for structural purposes unless alloyed with another metal to make it stronger. Now you tell me. How are the cookies anyway? Flavor's a little weak. <laughs> Next metal. Next, gold. Uh, Leo, we can't afford to build a machine out of gold. Yeah, unless you want to ask mom for a raise in our allowance. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, something else. Come on, think, Leo. What other metals are there? Have to taste good. Be strong, not be expensive. I know, iron! Oh, wait. Ta-da! Ella, you, you did it! You got it to work! But how? What metal did you use? I used an oven. Huh? I baked them the old fashioned way, with a mixing bowl and a baking sheet and an oven. In all the time it took you to try to invent a machine that bakes cookies automatically, I was able to bake a dozen manually. Mmm, these taste amazing! I guess sometimes old-fashioned is best. Now come on, let's finish these, then go play outside. Right, sure. But I was thinking, what if we had some milk to go with these? I could invent some sort of automatic cow-milking, self-pasteurizing machine. I just need a strong metal. Leo. Oh, all right. Just look at it, Cum. Isn't it beautiful? It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. What is it? Can't you tell? It's a CO2-powered soda machine. I was inspired by your new carbon dioxide producing Elamon Fizzler. Fizzler, Fizzler. <laughs> Fizzler, 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 Fizzler. Settle down, you two. You're getting water and carbon dioxide all over my lab. Yes, would be a shame if this place got messy, er. Leo, Mom says the lawn needs mowing and it's your turn. But, but, my soda machine. 
It's almost ready to serve up some delicious CO2-infused fizzy sodas. Sounds like it'll be very refreshing. After a long day mowing the lawn. <laughs> uh, come on, Akro and Fizzler. Let's get this over with. Haku, haku. Fizzler, Fizzler. Come, could you finish running diagnostics on my soda machine while I work outside? Of course. No, no, it's okay. I actually didn't want to come outside anyway. I love to spend sunny days cooped up in the lab. Fizzler, Fizzler. Come on, guys. Stop horsing around. I want to get this done as quick as humanly possible. That's better. Fizzler, Fizzler. Oh, that sun is hot. At least I'm making good progress. Fizzler, Fizzler. There. I should be totally finished. Okuro? Fizzler? What have you done? How did this happen? Ah, sorry. Was just, uh, rebooting. Um, where were we? Oh, you were wondering why Fizzler and Akuro were making the grass grow. I'll show you. You see, plants need foods just like humans. But unlike humans, plants can't just walk into a kitchen and grab a snack. They have to generate their own food. They do this through a process called photosynthesis. Plants gather water from the soil and carbon dioxide from the air. Then, using the energy from the sun, they transform the water into oxygen and the carbon dioxide into glucose, which is a form of sugar that plants need to survive. The plant then stores energy within the glucose molecules and releases the oxygen into the air. As Akuro and Fizzler played, they emitted water and carbon dioxide. Those ingredients, in conjunction with the sunny day, was enough to expedite the growth of all the grass and undo all of Leo's hard work. But it's okay, Leo is very chill. I'm sure he's handling this setback with grace and dignity. Ah! All my hard work! Ruined! This is the worst thing that's ever happened to anybody! <sighs> Come on, you two. I'm keeping you inside while I redo the lawn. Now, you two behave while I finish mowing. And don't touch anything! This is Ella's room, and she'll never forgive me if you break something. Fizzler, Fizzler! mowing the lawn for a second time. Uh, come, did you finish running diagnostics on my soda machine like I asked? Affirmative. You napped the whole time, didn't you? Affirmative. Oops, time for my hourly house scan. Don't mind me. Uh, I don't want to alarm you, Leo, but I am detecting abnormally high levels of CO2 in Ella's room. Huh, that's odd. Why would there be excessive carbon dioxide in Ella's room? Oh no! It appears the plant that Ella had growing in her room is doing quite well. Oh, Akuro! Fizzler! What have you done? Well, you see, plants use carbon dioxide and water to perform photosynthesis. I know about photosynthesis! I just mean, what are we gonna do? Ella's gonna be home any minute. I can already imagine what she'll say. Leo! Uh, yeah, something like that. You do realize you're going to have to clean all of this up, right? Uh-huh. Leo, maybe instead of focusing on a soda-making machine, you should work on inventing a wee whacker. Thanks, Cub. I crack myself up. And cut. That's a wrap. Couldn't have said it better myself. Until next time, bye.